switch keyword in Java. Switch allows you to take different actions depending on the value of a variable. A bit like if, um, except that switch is more efficient under some circumstances. Uh, now switch perhaps isn't used all that much by um, some professional developers, including myself, but um, it's, um, it's certainly something that you'll get quizzed about on courses and tests and it's um, a handy thing to know about. So let's say I'm going to create a scanner object here so that I can read user input and I'll say scanner input equals new scanner system.in and in Eclipse I'll press Control shift o to add the Java util scanner input there and then I'm going to get a value. Now um, you can only use switch to check certain types of variables and the most common two that you'll check are probably int and string. So let's try a string here. I'll say string text equals input dot get line. So we're getting um, some text from the user. And I'm also going to, um, sorry, not get line, but next line. And I'm also going to put a prompt here, sysout control space. Um, please enter some text. Actually, let's say please enter a command because I'm going to pretend that I'm operating some kind of machine here via text commands. So um, here I've, I've got my text that the user has entered and I'm going to say switch brackets text. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, so let's say text um, has the value start, the user type start. I want to take some action execute some code and if they type stop I want to execute other code and if they type you know run some other code and so on and I can use a switch to do exactly that so I'll say case um, and then um, I have to say the thing that I want to check against text so let's say case start um, and then some code that you want to execute for example I'll say machine started and then underneath that you need the break keyword. So um, for every value of text that you want to check you need a case statement starting with the case keyword and the value that you want to particularly check the variable for and a colon and then underneath that you type some lines of code that you want to execute if your variable happens to have this value and then you have break. So let's have another one. You can have as many as many of these as you like. I'll just put in two, I think. Stop colon. Uh, sys out machine stopped. Okay. Um, don't forget the break. And then um, you can also have a default case, which is optional. But um, if I say default colon, this is the code that will get executed if none of these alternatives are matched and you can have as I say as many as you like here there can be 10 or 20 or whatever so I'll say um, here command not recognized recognized and the default bit has to go at the bottom and uh, I'm going to press Control shift F here for format which will just um, reformat my code slightly in Eclipse I don't know what happened there. Okay, and um, now, yeah, Windows, thank you. Thanks, Bill Gates. Um, and now I'm going to um, just, um, I'm going to just run this. This is a complete program. So I'll click the green run button and we will see. It will say in a minute, please enter a command. Here we go. If I enter something like some rubbish like this, it's going to say command not recognized because um, this is what it does if none of these are matched. But if I run it again and I type um, start, for example, machine started or of course stop, machine stopped. Um, now, as I say, you can only switch on certain kinds of variables and int and, int and string are the most common two that you will use here. Uh, anything else? Um, 
or most most other things you would want to use like an if um, statement and um, the other thing to note is that these must be constants you can't uh, have case um, case um, blocks that try to check a variable here your the only variable can be this variable here um, and these must be constant values strings or integers or whatever okay well that's the switch statement covered have fun with that and um, in the next tutorial we're going to start looking at classes and objects. Um, if you've been following this series of tutorials, we've covered all the really basic building blocks of Java programs now, and you can already write pretty complex programs. And um, we're going to get on to some slightly more advanced um, concepts in the next tutorial, which will be number 10. So I hope you'll join me then.